Welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today we have the incredible, the hardest worker in Miami, the person who I can credit. I, I, I think so, man. The person yeah, who, nice. you know, I, I really have looked up to over the past couple of years, especially, you know, being in the Miami fitness industry. So without further ado, welcome Mark Magno. How you doing, Mark? What's up? I'm doing well. What a heck of an intro. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. It's uh, very kind. I'm not sure it's completely accurate, but um, it's very sweet of you. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Well, you know, coming from someone who, uh, two people really, who followed in, you know, at least somewhat similar uh, path as you, you know, we, we all started at uh, a bigger fitness uh, conglomerate and mm -hmm. decided that that wasn't the move that we needed to make for the, for the betterment of our lives and the lives of the community that we wanted to serve. Uh, you know, we, we really look to you as, as someone that, you know, we can, we can follow and someone that we can try, hopefully build off of, you know, in order to make the Miami fitness community as best of a community as we possibly can. Well, it means a lot. It means a lot, really. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, definitely, Mark, you know, and, you know, you know, my end as well, you know, it's just seeing, seeing what you've done, you know, and seeing not only the, it's not only so much the infrastructure, but just seeing you, what you've done as a person um, and how you live your life and how you go about it and who you associate yourself with. And, you know, just the messaging you put out there, it's, it's, that's, that's the true infrastructure, you know, that resonates with me. And that's why, you know, I can tell that you're so successful. And like Josh was saying, you know, for us, Miami, you know, people here in our community, you know, seeing that only inspires us to want to, you know, achieve more in life. Oh man. Uh, listen, it's uh, surrounding yourself with good people is my mission in life. And you're certainly two good ones. So thank you very much for making time to have me on, man. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily know if uh, I ever had the opportunity to do, do so. So, you know, I just wanted to thank you uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually worked for Mark for a little while as a group fitness instructor and just being able to kind of be behind the scenes at Anatomy, uh, the gym that you have here in, in Miami, the gyms, I should say. I know you're building out your third one right now. So congrats on that. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Uh, I, I, oh, thank you. I hope fourth. I'm, yeah, fourth. That's right. Fourth. Yeah. I forgot about yeah. the one at the one hotel. Um, yeah. You know, so, you know, getting getting a chance to kind of see the way that you operate uh, anatomy as a whole and the way that you not only, you know, interact with your members, which I think is one of the, the best things that I was able to take away from working at anatomy, but even seeing how you, you treated your employees, the other trainers and group fitness instructors, uh, you know, from personal experience working for other fitness companies, it's not always like that. You know, it's not always, it's not always supportive and coming from, you know, a really honest place where you just want people to, to succeed uh, for the betterment of themselves, not necessarily you, you know, to, to be able to see the way that you go about your business uh, really opened my eyes to just how much I was thinking about things from a scarcity mindset instead of a, a mindset where I can really make a difference in not only my clients lives, but, you know, people like Mendez and, and the trainers that I also want to help mentor. So, uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I know I didn't say it before, but thank you for that opportunity, man, because yeah, it, it really please. did make a big impact in my life. Well, thank you for saying that, but thank you for giving us a piece of your fitness, wellness journey and profession. Um, you're, you, were, you weren't a good instructor. You were a terrific instructor, and everyone thought very highly of you on the team, including myself and the community uh, loved you, so... Thank you, because you made us better. And uh, you, whenever you give of your craft to other people, you also raise them up. And the energy is everything, right? You only have so, so many energy units in the day, and you contribute a great energy to what we do here. So, thank you so very much. It means Thanks, a lot. Mark. It means a lot to me. Thank you, uh, Mark. So I got to ask you, um, you know, with with all the great things you've done, and you know, the leadership role that you play, and you know the way you carry yourself out with your team, how have you been able to maintain and duplicate such a great culture um, and be able to drive that message across 
your four gyms. Uh, well, your fourth one now opening up too, but across officially through these gyms that you have, how have you been able to do that in such a consistent way, which, you know, it's not that easy to be able to carry it out so consistently, you know, with you've seen with other gyms. So how have you been able to do that? And, and what was your approach like? That's a great question, Anthony. Um, you know, I think there's two, two important things that uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, address them. The first thing is you have to live your life. If you don't live your life, rather, the way that you hope to see community and culture at your business brand or facility, it won't work. And I am, I'm actually a big fan of Instagram. I'm a big fan of social media because it brings me into the world, uh, to the worlds of so many other people and, and college friends and professional, former professional athletes that I used to be so close with. But quite often, I think sometimes that a lot is lost there and you can't really truly connect with people. And the part that most people don't see is that, or didn't see, is that for almost a decade, as Josh mentioned earlier, I was at one of those conglomerate facilities and I had my head down and I was doing 10 to 12 to 13 to 14 sessions a day for almost a decade. And what happened was everyone and their mother told me to leave. And maybe I should have left after the second or third year, but I didn't. It was almost nine years and what was formed there was everything I needed to do what I'm doing today. And if I would have left, I wouldn't have the tools, nor the most important part, nor the relationships. Like the people that are on our team are people that I've known for 12 years. Amazing. Like they've been in my home. I've been in out with them. I've spent significant amount of time with them. I've made mistakes with them. We've grown together. We've learned from each other. We've learned to stay humble and we've learned that we really don't know too much and we're learning as we go. But the irony is that had I listened to the people that told me to leave, and by the way, people who cared very much about me and who did love me and thought very highly of me, but I needed to go through that because that's what brought me to where I am today. And I think a lot of the times we're, we're searching for this quick instant gratification and get this status. And we don't realize that the greatness or the great stuff, you just don't see it. And then, so we jump on, we listen. And by the way, I have a podcast as well. <laughs> so, I mean, we jump on a podcast or we read a book or we, we hire a guru and it's like, the truth is you learn it by reps you know, and for all the people that you've gotten in front of and all the special human beings in this world, I've learned more from them than I've ever taught them. And that's, that's the best school and education to do really anything in this world because it teaches us how to communicate efficiently and effectively. And it teaches us great listening skills. And the most important one is it teaches, teaches us how to stay humble uh, or humbles us and checks our ego. And that was, those are all things that make our community what it is today, because we have a group of like-minded, hardworking overachievers who actually enjoy working. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's something to say, you know, about what you guys have built there at Anatomy, where you have so many people seeking out your advice, seeking out your, your system, seeking out the the services that you provide, you know, being inside of the, the anatomy on South beach and even the one in midtown, you know, there's just a certain type of energy that you have when you're in there, you know, when you're in there, everyone's working really hard. Everybody is working really hard from the maintenance staff to the trainers, to the people that you have there that help with recovery to yourself and the people that work in the office to the member base, right? Everyone mm -hmm. is, is in there to get better. And that's not always, easy to find in gyms. You know, there's a lot of people that, that go to fitness facilities and, and just kind of want to spin their tires, but at anatomy, it's yeah. different. You know, at anatomy, yeah. people go there and I'm not just saying this because you're on the podcast You know, I really do believe this. I, I think, well, Thank he you. told me, he Thank tells you. me all the time from yeah. his experience being there and working. He's oh, always told me the amazing, you know, experience yeah. he had there. 
Um, and I know Josh, you know, he's, he's one that, you know, he, when he, he's a critic, you know, when he, when he knows something is not good, he'll say it. And when he knows something's great, he will say it as well. So, you know, yeah. I can attest to that, that it's, it's definitely not because you're on the podcast it's because it's truly what you're doing is great. I appreciate what, it very much. Thank what you. exactly, you know, was there, a, was there a, a, a pivotal moment or were there like a handful of moments in, in your life, whether it be, you know, through your football career or when you got into training where you realized that you had to make a change, you know, to become the person, to become the coach, to become, you know, the mentor that you are today? Mm -hmm. Man, well, you guys have some great questions. We could talk for like 10, 10 hours. It sounds like, but, um, um, yeah. So, I think we all, everyone gets into fitness and wellness because they have this thing inside them that they want to help assist or make better. And that could be, you know, insecurity. That could be, I don't like the way I look. That could be, help me build my confidence, help me feel better about who I am, whatever it may be. And I started off very young as a very shy, you know, crazy, insecure um, I didn't like my body. I would wear big t-shirts and I, I still see that in the mirror. Like I don't see a very, a fit individual who, who's worked hard with it. I still see that little boy. And I, I know that there's a lot of people in this world who have those issues. It doesn't matter if you're a little boy or a little girl, you could be an adult and have the same issues. So I knew that at some point in my life, I would try to help people through things like that. That's what I knew. And I found it my confidence through sports and through the ranks of sports through uh, youth football high school college and i played ice hockey uh, football um, baseball i realized that i had some truly extraordinary mentors and leaders in college i mean the guy who was my college coach he was like a father figure to me and he's i still connect with him weekly and he wasn't trying to win football games he was trying to um, build men or raise men or develop young men into good human beings. And that's something that never was, is never lost. And I knew that if I could take everything and then in, uh, in the NFL, I played for four hall of fame coaches and you don't get to, you know, you, it's, you don't get in the hall of fame just by winning. You get in the hall of fame because of the way you do things. You certainly wins in Super Bowls, but it's just you they develop these super mega cultures that dude no one's ever late no one ever complains at least you know outside of their and maybe they do inside their bedroom with the door locked but no one's complaining no one's big toxic no one's bringing the energy down it just doesn't happen so to, to learn all those things, I, I said, I have all these wonderful life lessons and things that I've learned. And I've learned them by struggling and making, you know, big mistakes that I felt the culture, the, what we have guys is it's special. Anatomy is a beautiful place. I love the space, I love the equipment, but as you already know, it's already about, it's about the people. And you said that. So thank you. But I wanted everyone to know that at the end of the day, we want to be happy. And what does that mean? That means you're in an environment where you can come in here and you can pretty much do whatever you want. As long as you're respectful to yourself and to the people around you, you can do whatever you want. Exercise good judgment and, and show great respect. And this is your home. And the reason that I, I broke away was because I felt we could create a culture in a community like no other. Now, I want you to know, most people that I'm, I'm in a room right now at Anatomy where we do lots of our interviews, and the majority of the young people that sit across this desk, they say, I, wanna, I want my own gym. And I love hearing that because we need as much fitness and wellness in the world as possible. That's but that being, yep. yeah, we really do because that's such a positive thing. And I believe fitness and wellness and, and the fitness industry starts with a healthy mind. So, but the, the amount of just things that you have to deal with as a business owner, it's, it's insane. 
Like it's truly insane. That's why, it's That's why everyone everybody. says, no, you're absolutely right. It's not for, and that doesn't mean you're good or bad. It's just, it's just, you have to be okay with taking on a huge amount of responsibility. And when things go well, it's not because of you. And when things go bad, it's because of you. So you have to be okay with that. And it's very likely that all the stuff that you're doing and taking time away from your family may not be as appreciated as you would like, but there's a bigger picture. The bigger picture is helping the masses in leaving something in this world that you could say, I did as much as I could possibly do to help people. And maybe you left a small dent on this world. But to answer, sorry about the long winded answer guys, but the answer was because I wanted to create a community and culture like no others. I couldn't, I didn't do it myself. I have, my business partners are incredible. Chris, Randy, David, like they're incredible people. And I can attest I'll tell that. you, yeah, they really are extraordinary people. Like I've grown so close to them and I've learned from them. Like I, they don't learn anything from me. Like I've learned from them and just our trainers, Jacqueline Kaysen, Eric Story, Alessandra, Grant, they're just, they're very special people. And, uh, if you guys, if you can get those types of people, the nucleus, and keep that going, you just create this standard that's so special. And they, they choose how they want to show up, right? They choose how they show up every day. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have anything. That's the truth. I, so. I definitely agree, man. Like, you know, it's, it, it, and, and obviously I know what you, what you run, you're running something way bigger, but even when me and Josh talk and we, you know, we come together and it's just one of those things, it's like it's who you put yourself with and who you decide to show up with yourself in, in a business yeah. every single day and, you know, go to battle with, whether it's good, bad, um, yeah. you know, ups and downs, you know, not agreeing with certain things, but you figure it out because you guys still have that same goal driven mind of where you want to get to. And, you know, us being completely different individuals, we make it happen, you know, Shit, right, look, even right. how we look, we're completely different, yeah, yeah. you know? So it, it's, it's, you know, it's amazing that you brought that up, but it's, it's super, super, super important. Yeah. That's right. Well, and you, you know, and it doesn't, and I'm sorry, Josh, but it doesn't matter how, you know, uh, how big or small, but you guys are doing something incredibly special together and you complement each other. But even if you disagree on something, it's how you disagree. That's right. It's right. do you disagree, see each other's point and move forward, or do you let it grudge for a week or a month? And that's so powerful, like how you deal with things, because people don't always disagree, uh, excuse me, agree. And can you value each other and move forward, or do you get stuck and do you let your ego eat away at you? Right. I think there's that, that you know, agreement of, of mutual respect, right? Where even when you know, you and I come from, from different backgrounds from Mendez and, you know, you're from Boston, I'm from upstate New York, different backgrounds there, but the respect of no matter, no matter what happens in your life, I know Mark, like when it comes to anatomy, when it comes to the people that you're working with or, 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 or that are working for you, you're going to give everything you have for them every single day. You know, I know I can always lean on Mendez when, you know, I don't have enough time to do something. I can call him up and say, listen, man, I really need you to get this done for the podcast or for whatever business we're working on and vice versa. If he comes to me, he knows he can count on me every single time to do what needs to be done so that we can keep moving things forward for the betterment of our lives, for the betterment of our business, and so that we can really help the people that we want to help in the future. That's, that's, that's very well said. And that, that, that's everything. The, the ability to call the person next to you being able to depend on them and know that they're going to follow through. That's everything. That's very rare. Like, can I get off the phone with someone and say, shoot me your avail availability and it shows up 30 seconds later. That that's very rare. Every athlete I've ever worked with, every organization I've ever played for every business I've ever been a part of the people that do well are the people that follow through. I mean, immediately. And it's, there's not a lot of people like that. Why not do you think we have, go ahead, please. Why do you think that, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but why do you think, no, why do you think follow up and following through is such a rarity, especially now? I mean, we live in Miami. It's, yeah. it's, it's rampant, right? Where people tell you one thing and then do another, yeah. you know, now, unfortunately. I'm, I'm born and raised here. So I've, I've, 
and attest you know, that for yeah. years. Yeah. Why is it such a rarity? And in, in, in are there characteristics in people that you look for when you know, like, okay, I can I can lean on this person? Yeah. Well, there's a few people in the organization. Like all of them have a very most have a very very strong track record. But I can a few people come to mind where they they've never not gotten back to a text immediately an email a call whatever it is i need something i get it never and we have trainers that uh, we call them body architects but body architects that they message their clients before a session they message their clients after a session then they message their clients again to confirm the next session like clockwork like clockwork and how many people can do that? Listen, they never cancel, never. They never move a session. And listen, that's, that's, I can't even say that, but that's why they are so special and so extraordinary. And to answer your question, I think the reason that people don't follow through is because they, you know, between the quotes and the, the big goals and everyone is focused down there where they don't understand where their results come right here. I need to focus on what's going on right here, but so I can get there, but they get distracted. They get distracted with the phone. They get distracted right. with, you know, their day and they, I want to do this, 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 and this. And they don't realize you can't even do this. Just do this. Yep. And I can't tell you the amount of ideas and suggestions that, that flood in and we should do this and we should do this. And I said, Let's do that, but let's just do these things that you haven't been able to do yet. And they don't understand, well, I don't really want to do that. I said, well, what makes you think you're going to have the ability to follow through on something that grand if you can't do the smallest of detail? And I know you've heard it in not so many words so many times, but if we could just wrap our head around that, I only need to do the most basic things extremely well, and I'll have great success. They don't, they don't, people don't want to buy into that because it's not sexy. Okay. It's not amazing. It's not, doesn't come with a million dollar price tag, but how do you think they get there? Not everyone's lucky. You know, people bring up Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. I'm thinking Mark Zuckerberg was, was programming for years wearing flip-flops and a hoodie before people <laughs> even knew who he was. Yeah. You know, Elon Musk, you're just watching videos now. He's been doing that for 25, 30 yeah. years, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I mean, there's that, there's that, you know, viral photo of, of Jeff Bezos, like sitting yeah. at his the computer, garage. like, yeah, in the garage with, Amazon with, banner. with all of the, yeah. you know, piles of, of paperwork and everything. And just like that little, banner. you know, banner that said, yeah. <laughs> that said Amazon yeah. books on it. You yeah, know? exactly. Exactly. And then you see like a guru come up, I'll show you how to do this quick. I'm like, Dude, yeah. that's, I'll that's get you a hundred X return on your yeah. programs. Like, yeah. Okay. That's chief. That, <laughs> it's like that. I, I, I love, I love the hustle. I love mm -hmm. the hustle, but at the same time, like I'll give it away for free. I'll tell you exactly what to do, but you're probably not going to want to do it. Yep. That's right. the truth. And I've heard it in professional sports. I went to Louis Simmons gym and he said the exact same thing. We had a conversation. He said, well, everyone's doing this. He goes, yeah, he gives everything away. Because the ability to follow through is very unlikely. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll tell you exactly what to do, but you, ha you have to do it. And what does that mean? You got to get up at 3 a.m. You got to go to bed after you talk to the last member who's upset and disappointed or the last team member who's disappointed and not feeling good about their path. And you got to do it every single day, your entire life. So I'll tell you exactly what to do, but do you want to do that? Because that's exactly what it is. And anything short of that, it's not going to work because it's going to take every ounce of energy in your body for the rest of your life. Yeah. It sounds so cliche, but you know, the hardest part is showing up every day. You know this, I mean, it's, it's something that we tell all of us tell our clients yep. all the yeah. time. Like if yeah. you show up, you won the battle, right? Everything mm -hmm. else will be easy from that point on. If you walk into the gym, the hardest part's over. You know, you got through that mental yes. hurdle of getting in your car, getting on your bike and getting, getting into the facility. Now the fun begins. Right. And I think one You're of the things right. too, that, um, you know, where you see a lot of downfall happens, you know, whether, you know, it's if you're a business owner, or you're just somebody who is trying to create things and you have, a you know, some project you want to work on or lose some weight or, you know, so on and so forth. You know, I, I think it truly, you know, shows on your part where you have an established system. You have a system that you follow every single day with 
routine, you know, your tasks, mm -hmm. what you know you need to tackle on, where a lot of people in life don't have a system in their daily life, whether right. it's for their business or for themselves. Um, and I think that's where you see a lot of times where they get distracted by the phone or the this because mm -hmm. they're like, where do I put my time and energy into? I don't know mm -hmm. where I need to put in. So I'll pick up the nearest thing that I can find, whether it's a piece of chips to eat or my phone right. to grab or yeah. this. Their and actions are directionless. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of times it's people, people have that missing link where it's like, what system do I need to follow? You know, what do I need to put into my life that can steer me towards success and whatever, you know, whatever system is going to help them get to that success that they want. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's, it's something it, that is of importance is being able to find the system that works from you, whether it's from your coach, mentor, or somebody that, you know, has done it from what you're trying to achieve and being able to stick to something as well and not reinvent the wheel, you know, and I think that's, I'm sure a lot mm -hmm. of your coaches, right. you know, who follow your system have success because they don't reinvent the wheel that you created you know, and, no, and so on no. and for, so forth from your mentors. Yeah. So, I mean, that's very well said. Um, you know, a couple of things, so Josh, you said, you know, people show up and we have a, a popular quote that circulates through our team. The people who get what they want are the ones who show up to get it. So you have to show up and you have to show up every single day. And I'm not saying like, I don't think people understand like, you don't have to, there's something to be, listen, if you're sick, especially now, you got to stay home, right? Yeah. But I've known people in my life who've never called in sick. Like never, they've never called in sick. The day my father died, I went to the train. Like I didn't, you know, like it, it doesn't, we, we were, it's, and it's not, I'm not saying that's necessary. I'm, my point guys is the massive amount of consistency is the lesson. And, you know, people I hear, it's not clients. I have some very dedicated and committed clients. Um, but usually for the trainers that, that don't work out, they, it's all perspective. Like I want to make more money here. I want to do this. I don't want to do this. It's not working for me. And I just look at them. They're not committed, but wait, you have to, understand that Josh, Anthony, your definition of commitment is going to be very different from my definition of commitment. And I say, if you're not committed to this, that's okay. But just for conversation, show me one thing that you're committed to so I can get a clear understanding of what commitment means to you. Because if you're committed to something, you will die before you fail at it. Period. And yeah. people say that's a, that's a little extreme. And I'm like, well, do you want to be successful? Right. You know, you, if you want all those things, you have to understand that you have to go to war every yeah. day. And it's, it, it, I know it sounds extreme, but that's what it takes. That's why 4% of biz, small businesses make it less than 4%. And it's, I just don't understand that people don't, get how much they have to go all in to make something work. And that's what it is. I've heard, do you remember uh, uh, Matt Sherman from um, Hugo Fresh? Yeah. Mm. So Matt Sherman was on my podcast and he said something to me that I think about every single day. Matt Sherman made more money in green juice than anyone probably in the United States in the first two years of the green juice craze. I think he made like, you know, $3 million out of a, 150 square foot store in Miami beach the first year. And it kind of trended down because he told me on the podcast, no, it's not just taking his eyes off it. It was that it got really hard for him. And he said, business is for warriors. And I pray every day that I can come equipped and do my best because a lot of people depend on me and my business partners depend on me and I depend on them more than ever right now. I'm sure. Oh, more than ever. It's like, especially now, like just connecting with people, you know, so it, you, you have to really go all in and be so insanely committed. But I tell people nowadays, guys, just commit to something in training in life. Show me what long term commitment is, because that's the only way to get results. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I truly even think now, you know, during the times like these where people have extra time on their hands to do something. You know, it's like, 
you know, commit to your health. If that was your priority, they wanted to hit, you know, commit to your business. If you're trying to build a business that you've always wanted to and, and, and be able to get out of your corporate job, if that was your job, if you're, that was your goal, you know, commit right. to, you know, your family, if you wanted to spend more time with your family and that was your goal, cause you couldn't, cause you were so busy, then commit to that, you know, but Absolutely. I think it's, it's, it's perfect. Like you said it, you know, and I think now more than ever, it's, it's an awareness where people can, you know, need to, you know, see and realize like, you know, guys, you know, it's important to commit to something and stick to it and finish it, you know, not just commit for a short period of time, but commit to it to the end. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, speaking of this, you know, commitment and, and things that we're going through now, what are some of the ways and some of the approaches that you're taking during a time like this, where, where it's obvious that you commit to your team and how do you drive that commitment for them to commit to you during times like this? And how is it that you're still functioning, functioning at a high level, doing what you're doing during times like this? And what is your biggest piece of advice for other business owners out there during these times? Oh, man. Uh, this is a tough one. So another great question, certainly. But I think, and I know you've heard it, we've heard it ad nauseum at this point but you know tough times don't build character they reveal character and I used to have a football coach that my college coach Jim Reed he used to say you know Mark we're gonna find out what people are really made of after today because it's 110 degrees out there's three practices and guys are dying and people are going to the hospital they're getting IVs and I'm thinking I just want to stand upright I keep pushing myself <laughs> as long as I don't quit and can stand, I made it right. Mm -hmm. So, but in this time, it's like, you know, I had people, people that I dude cared a lot about and really thought highly of, I mean, their character was flipped on its head and I've never seen, I was at home, you know, emotional and, and very emotional. I, I, the world was flipped on its head and I grew up with some very tough individuals. I grew up with uh, people that were good to me, but they're in their lives. They were criminal type people. They were uh, drug dealers, drug users. They were, they were tough human beings and their character in regards to the way they treated their close friends was way higher than some of the behavior I saw during COVID. And that was very humbling for me because I, I've never seen character or behavior like that in my life. And during this time, I called every single team member to connect with them and see how they were doing, just to have a conversation. Some didn't even return my call. Some I talked to two, three, four, five times. Um, but just trying to stay connected and see how people are doing because what can I do for them other than lend my ear in a caring voice? And maybe if they need me to do a favor for them, I'll certainly do it. Um, but just try to be as understanding as possible. But there, there's another side. You want to be understanding. You want to be empathetic. You want to try to see things through their eyes. But at the same time, you still need to hold them accountable, right? Because care and love comes with accountability. And if they want to be a part of something, you got to go to work. You have a responsibility, you have a job, and you said yes to that job. Now, if you don't want that job, that's okay. Let's, let's invest in the people that are most loyal to us, and let's move forward. Um, but recognizing the individuals and appreciating the people who weathered the storm, that was a very powerful thing. And the people who have moved on, you wish them well, you, know, you care about them, and you want them to have great success. But because you only have so many energy units and you only have so much time, you, you're, you're forced to focus on the people that stood by you, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that, how have things been since Anatomy opened back up? You know, I know it was, you know, it had been rough for those couple of months that all the gyms were yeah. closed here in Miami. It could, could not have been easy. I know I talked to Jacqueline a couple of times and, mm -hmm. you know, she, she was pretty emotional at times. She was nervous. And, you know, when, when things opened back up, I saw her again at, at Flamingo Field and she was 
yeah. amped, super, super excited, super ready to get yeah. back and, and be yeah. with, you know, her group fitness instructors and be with the members, you know, the group fitness community at anatomy is amazing. You know, everyone is super uplifting in those classes. Sure. Uh, so, you know, I just want to kind of get your take on like how things, how things have been going since you guys opened back up and, and what are you really looking forward to most moving forward into the, the right. remainder of summer and into fall? Right. Um, Firstly, let me just say that uh, Jacqueline Kaysen is not only a, a amazing group fitness instructor, she's the head of group fitness instruction and programming at Anatomy, and she is an incredible human being, and she's worked very, very hard to make things work, and that, that hasn't been easy. I mean, there's been a, a, a vicious learning curve, and she has a lot of wonderful instructors to work with, and a lot of balls in the air to juggle. It's, it's a tough job, but she does a really special job of making it all work and, and moving on the fly. Um, but to answer your question, it's, I'm, look, at the beginning, it was so hard because there's so much uncertainty and no one, we've never been through this before. There's no playbook. And I, I just truly feel, I know I'm talking up what benefits Mark in anatomy, but in gyms, look, how do you feel after you train? Amazing. You walk out, of, you feel amazing, right? You feel special. The endorphins, yeah, neurotransmitters, everything's firing. You feel great. Like people need physical fitness. I know it doesn't have to be in a gym because you can certainly walk and go outside. But we do live in Miami. It's hot as hell out, right? Oh, yeah. shit, man. So, it's brutal. It's, brutal. Right it's, it's, it's so hot. <laughs> but, you know, I've had people write in and, and email, and they're, like, on the edge. Like, they're not doing well mentally and now physically because of the mental side is so out of alignment. But when we opened back up, there were people that walked in crying, saying, I miss this place so much. And it's not because I, – I, I understand some of it's because of anatomy, but because – they need physical fitness in their life, right? Yeah. So, but it's not just physical fitness. It's people need people. That's they what it is. People. Yeah, the human they connection. They need people. Oh, it's incredible. I went, and I think I, I may have talked to Josh about this. I'm not sure, but I went away to a 10-day retreat, a Vipassana retreat. 10 days, no talking, no phone, no computer, in the woods, meditating 10 hours a day. It's 100 hours of meditation in 10 days. Wow. Every single person there is in tears crying. The reason they're crying is because there's no eye contact. There's no talking. There's no socializing. There's nothing. Your head's down the whole time for 10 days. You're in complete silence. There's no music, no book, no paper. You can't even journal. Wow. People need people. So I'm looking forward to when you walk in the gym, seeing your face and seeing your smile and looking you in the eye. And we don't have to say anything. But I love being around people, and you guys give me strength. Whenever I see a post, whenever I see something special, it makes me smile. I love it, and that's why we're here. We're here to build people up, not tear them down and ridicule them and hate on them. That's the best part of what we do. We add value to others by being our best selves and recognize it in others. Couldn't have said it any better, you know, and, and that's, that's spot on, you know, and it's so true, man. You know, I think going back to even, you know, the saying about, you know, people need physical activity, um, especially now more than ever, where, you know, it's 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 one of those crucial things where you don't hear it too much, especially on the news, which I wish it would do a better job at pushing health um, and getting people to want to be motivated to go outside, exercise, get better sleep, you know, move your body and, and do these things that are going to help you, you know, with your mental issues, with your physical issues and your internal issues and any issues you may have with other people, because we all know that right. when like you said, when these chemicals get going and you feel good, you know, that is going to bounce off to everybody around you, you know, and if you're feeling good and people feel that they're going to feel good too, you know? So I think right. it's, it's just one of those things where we need to push more and, and then the, the, the news and the media and, and people as a whole need to just push more, how much, how important health and fitness is overall you know, for a community itself and how it can really bring a community together. Um, and everybody can just feel the, the frequency and vibes, you know, at a higher rate where, you know, you put, you know, people are not seeing each other. People are not working out. Tension is being built up. 
you know, stress is going up the roof. You know, people are suffering with this. People are suffering with that. And then we're spending too much time on Twitter, spending too much time on certain things. Oh, yeah. and guess oh, yeah. what happens? You know, you get, you get, you get a ball of chaos, you know, that's right. That's absolutely yeah. accurate. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, everything's are coming to a head and, and there's a lot of tension, anxiety, and people need people, people need movement, people need exercise. And, you know, more than ever, I, I, I think it's ironic because now when I go into a gas station or a store, I'm overly friendly, <laughs> like beyond friendly. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just, I just want to spend time with a complete stranger and go, so what are you, what are you shopping for today? This is like, a <laughs> you know, and they're like, they, they, they think this guy's out of his mind, but it's very funny because now when I go in the store, I go in the store at CVS at like three o'clock in the morning and the woman knows exactly where I go in there for toiletries or whatever, but I enjoy going in there because I enjoy saying hello to her. She's like a 70 year old uh, local lady, super sweet, super kind. And it makes my day to see how she's doing. And I can only imagine she might think I'm a serial killer or something, but yeah, it's, I don't, uh, I, I agree with you, man. I don't, I don't think I've ever talked so much to like servers at restaurants or like hostess. <laughs> right. You know, I'm like, right. oh, so like, you know, you guys doing okay? Like, you know, yeah, how's everything? Yeah. You're all right. You personally are. I'm like, I've never yeah. done this before. I need to do more right. of this. This is amazing. Right. You know? And that's the wonderful part of this whole situation. I, every time at night we have this ritual, my wife, we say, we say grace and we just, you know, we're, we're grateful and thankful for before we have our last meal of the day. And I always say, I pray that this world that we all, this world, we learn some special lessons from this because there's so many great takeaways. And one of the takeaways is let's all just be a little bit better, yeah. a little bit better. And I have a ton of work to do. So I think that if I can just think about, I was so, when I'm going back, I was so upset at some of the people that just scattered when this happened. But I had to learn to, well, Mark, the reason they did that is because they're the uncertainty and they don't, they're worried about their families. And when I look through their eyes, you know what? I, I get it. I understand. You know, I understand. We're all doing the best we can. So one day at a time, I just hope we learn some great lessons from this, as you said, Josh. For sure. No, Mark, I wanted to ask you, and I, I, I you know, based on what we were saying now, I know we kind of touched upon that. But what were the three biggest things that you can say you have truly learned during these times? Things that you're like, man, you know what? I never saw it this way. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think in general, I think we're all, we're all pretty fragile. And, you know, we, we, we want to be tough and we think we're, you know, tough as leather and we're hardcore, but, you know, you take us out of our routine, you take a few privileges away and we're all very fragile. I think that's the first thing. And I think that we've been a little bit spoiled. Like we want to go out to, in Miami, you go to with your family. It's amazing. It's beautiful. The food's great. You get treated like a king. Like that's not normal. No, like that, not. I, like I didn't grow up that way, but I, didn't. I, get to I don't do think you get busted either. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, it, it, but you've worked hard. You deserve, you know, you deserve yeah. it now. But right. when you don't get those options, it's like, man, I, I think I really had it pretty good before. You know, yeah. it just it makes you appreciate what you do have. You know, and so a combination of appreciating what you do have and um, understanding that it's not normal it's okay and it's great and you should strive to, to have wonderful things in your life. But just understand that just because it doesn't go perfectly, like that's okay. You know? And I think we need to just deal with a little bit more adversity and we got a heavy dose, man. We got a heavy <laughs> dose. So yeah. I mean, ad adversity yeah. builds character, man. A hundred percent. You know, when you're like you said before, right. When you're thrown into that fire, you, you really do get to see what a person is made of reveals you know? yeah for sure yeah. for sure you know sure. are are they going to be able to withstand and, and support everyone else or are they going to just try to fight for themselves and and hope oh, yeah. for the best yeah. and i think it's well you don't know, you, know you, like, you, you, you when you get leaders like yourself and other people that we've you know we've spoken to so many great individuals and you know even then you know what me and josh are trying to do and what you're trying to when you can get people who are trying to push you know a healthy message across on a daily basis and when you can lead, you know, because there is a lot of people out there who they, they need to hear it from somebody. They need that 
you know, drive, you know, and, and, and I think it's amazing when you, us collectively as, you know, people in the industry and, and being able to lead others um, to their success. I think it's amazing when you can have that and we can share that information to let each other know, like, like, you know what, there are people who are doing that. And there are people who are trying to bring a bigger, a, a, a bigger message across everybody in the community. And there are leaders out there who are wanting better for them and wanting to bring people together and showing them the way um, and, and, and holding them by the hand at, at certain times if they need it. So that way they can start holding themselves accountable um, yeah. and just need that little push. So, you know, the fact that we're doing this, I just, it, it, it makes me happy every time I come on and speak to different guests because it just shows that there, there is a, a level of, of careness in the world of, you know, wanting to better the, the individuals out here who are struggling. And, you know, when, and when you can know that, that there's leaders out there, I think it also brings you back to a, a sense of peace as, at the same time, knowing that, you know what, maybe it isn't out as all that bad, even though it's, it might be bad, but isn't as all that bad because there are these leaders who are putting their foot down and, you know, trying to pick people up. Right. No, well said, well said. I mean, um, also, you know, adversity builds character, it reveals character and it exposes the uncommitted and it, expose, and it shows true leadership. And true leadership isn't talking, posting quotes, it's really just the way you behave in times of high stress, anxiety and adversity. Yep. So, you know, a behavior to me is always everything. And look, we, I've been, I've, you know, as many of those individuals who crumble during this time i saw people rise up that i i'm in shock i'm very surprised that they rose to the top and it's beautiful to see you know it's really special to see and they, they i call them humble warriors and they're quiet warriors and they you know they they did this the whole time the whole time i mean those are people you want in their fo in your foxhole and and it was impressive to see people who seize the moment right that's well, right you know absolutely people are attracted by like-minded people, right? And people who are doing the things that they aspire to do. And I think that you're a prime example of someone who, you know, Anthony and I talk about this all the time. You know, you're someone who we, we look up to. I know I've, I've told you this before. I told you at the beginning of the podcast, like when, when we think shit gets tough, you know, you're one of the people as an example that we look to in order to be able to rise to the occasion. Like, you know, I've been in anatomy plenty of times. I get, I, you know, you start your workout before I do, you get on the rower. I finish my workout. You're still on the rower. You know, you're still yeah, going just I'm as trying. hard. I'm trying, I'm and, trying, and, I'm and trying. That, that work ethic is permeable. You know, it, it is, it is addictive to be around people who have work ethic like you have that while still, you know, with all the success that you've had throughout your career, like, the fact that you're still humble about everything and you're still working so hard and you're still trying to find improvements. I've seen you in the back office reading books, you know, do you have to do that? No, but you want to do it because you know that that's how you're going to be able to help yourself, help your business, help other people within your business and help the members that you're serving, you know? Um, and I just want to thank you again, one more time, you know, for oh, please. You know, rising you. the Miami community uh, of fitness to, to the point that it is today. I don't think, the community as a whole would be where it was if it weren't for people like you. Um, Thanks. And I hope that, you know, one day we can, we can hopefully take that, take that torch and, and continue to continue to build it up as you know, we progress oh, yeah. through our career like you have. And for oh, all you man. young bucks, I, I, Thank you. I, I wouldn't challenge Mark at a rowing challenge. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Maybe, maybe a couple of years of practice first. Yeah. But before yeah. we cut loose, I know Mendes has a couple of questions for you. But before he gets to those, sure. uh, you know, where can people find you? Uh, where can they find your podcast? Magna Method, right? That's Magna Method. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can always find me, number one, at Anatomy. Um, you know, I'm either at one of the locations, the beach. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited yeah. to see that coconut grove location, man. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen some of your Instagram stories and some yeah. from Grant and Jack. And what part already of the looks grove? beautiful. What part? It's in a, a right in front. It's in front of the mar marina oh, right beautiful. there. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a nice area. It's going to be really special. I'm really excited. I'll definitely so you have guys, to stop uh, by. <laughs> yeah. You guys got to come out and uh, try it out and give us some feedback. When yeah, it absolutely. Opens. absolutely. I live in um, South Miami, so it's close to me. Oh, cool. Awesome. Awesome. You got to come in. Um, but certainly at anatomy and then, um, 
you know, you can find me on, on Instagram uh, at Mark Magna and Twitter. I don't just mostly on Instagram and a little bit of Facebook, but um, also the Magna Method podcast. I just have on anyone actually. I'm going to have a series of psychologists on. I'm actually oh, cool. very excited about. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Ask different questions. I think it's going to be great. Um, also, I finished a book last year called Dream Big Never Quit. I actually just finished last weekend. I finished the audio version that should be out. Uh, awesome. Uh, in a few weeks to a month we'll promote and, it for uh, so yeah let yeah let us know oh, we'll, thank we'll, we'll you sure to throw uh, yeah that's super super nice it. yeah it, it was by the way it's very hard to do because it was in my <laughs> I, I did it myself oh that's great i i, I <laughs> hate was, i hate when people aren't narrating their own books you know i just think i know there's something about hearing the author's voice i know well, if i, I, agree, I narrate I agree my own i think you'll know it's my book <laughs> <laughs> you'll know it's my uh, book i'll tell you I, I, but now I understand, Josh, why you don't hear the person's voice. Yeah. Because the amount of time it took me to do that, it was nauseating. Oh, I man. couldn't believe it. I could not believe Because every sentence that you mess up, go back. Go back. <laughs> it takes so much time. But Harder uh, anyway, than training so, in football. <laughs> oh, way harder. You have, to stay, you, have, you have to stay clear for like six hours. Wow. It's hard. <laughs> Yeah. And by the way, check this out. In a room, a recording room that's a little box. And you're not a small AC. guy. You wait, know? wait, <laughs> wait. But but Josh, there's no AC, Anthony. Ooh, oh the AC God. the AC can't be on because of the sound. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh right? my God. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Anyway, so also the a documentary, Just a Kid from Fall River, uh with, that just got uh, uh selected to be in the Raleigh Film Festival. Um Amazing. Randy West uh, of congrats. Monarch Productions. I didn't do anything. Randy West did all the work and he should be uh, the director. He's an incredible human being. So please go check that out. It's an incredible film because of the way Randy did it. Not just because it's about my life, but um, you can see it on Amazon or iTunes. Awesome. And um, that, that's really it. Um, I, I come stop by anatomy, check anatomy out where we're growing uh, in the most positive way. We have incredible instructors. I want to give a shout out to the anatomy community and the anatomy team. Our team is one of a kind. Awesome. 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 They are so great. And I, I, I that. love, I would, I'd like to talk about each one of them right here, but you know, you guys would kill me, but <laughs> shout out to the team for working so hard and making anatomy what it is. Uh, I think the world of everyone within the organization. So thank you. Mark, you know, it's truly amazing everything you shared today. And, and once again, you know, on my end and Josh's, we really, truly appreciate it. I have one question for you um, to, leave, to leave off to all our listeners. Mm -hmm. In one sentence, what's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to everybody today? Can I get two? Of course. Get it. Of course. All right. Thank you. Um, stay open-minded. Uh, try to keep your ego at bay because you don't know what you don't know. Like we really think we, we know it all and we miss so many things and have so many blind spots. I know I certainly do. So just try to keep it as humble as you can and, and know that you can learn something from every single person that crosses your path. And the second one, I'm really, um, it's really important to me and I think it should be important to everyone. Root for other people. Love it. Root yeah. for other people, you know, just because someone else has success, that doesn't mean it's taking away from you. Root for other people. Yeah. Well, listen, you got two big fans here. You know, we're, we're rooting for the entire anatomy community. We're, you know, hoping for a, a super successful launch of an opening of, of your fourth location. We'll be there. You know, it's amazing yeah. the things that you guys are doing yeah. there and in any way that we can support you guys, please let us know and, and we'll be happy to do so. Well, I'm going to listen. I'm support you guys. Thank you for your support. But I Appreciate think you're it. both uh, special human beings, and yeah, I, I I follow you. But um, you can see something special growing here. And in my, uh, if you don't mind me saying, my best you is keep it going because people are watching, people are listening, and you're doing something special. Thank you, man. And, we appreciate, uh, appreciate that so, a lot. So yeah, so keep it going. Keep it Thanks, going. Man. And it, it it was an honor to be on. Yeah, we. it was an honor to have you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Until next time, Mark Magna. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Take care Appreciate now. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.